um, with a, a girl. We're going to call her name Rebecca. And uh, she was an ex Satanist. She's now a Christian. Um, but she shares a chilling testimony of what it was like when she was in uh, this Satanic cult right from childhood. So watch now. I was the fifth brother of Satan, and my power that I ran with was my element was fire, and you couldn't get any higher than what I was. I could move things without touching them, and I could make people stand away from me and command the demons to go get people and make them push, get pushed away. I could protect myself in that sort of way, and I really liked the power. You were taught concerning the things of the dark side of the supernatural at a very young age. Could you share some of that with us? I was really involved with the satanic church every day. Um, the high priest would come and get me, and they would uh, take me to the church, and they would um, they would violate me. But, and they would have, we'd have communion every day. And that consisted of blood and urine and semen and a black widow. And that was, yeah, an everyday part of my life. How did you feel about that? I felt really scared, but at the same time, I liked the power that I had, that they taught, and I had inside of me, because everybody has gifts inside of them. And you can be influenced by the Holy Spirit or the familiar spirit. And I was totally influenced by the familiar spirit. I had Satanists around me constantly following me. You saw um, many very ugly things like animals get sacrificed, even humans, and, and other really terrible things. Did it ever occur to you that this was evil? No, because I was so brainwashed at the time because... When I was four years old, I was raped and molested by a high priest, and I knew nothing else of all that stuff, and I was just brainwashed with the Satanism and knowing that Satan was God and God was not real. Satan was God for me. And I thought, yeah, I was so numb to it, really. How did you view Christians back then? I hated them because they had no power like... I heard so many times that, you know, God was real and, Christ and Jesus was so true, but I didn't see the power working throughout the church. In fact, I saw Satanists working also in the church, and Satanists tied more than Christians do. One time I was sitting in a Benny Hinn conference, and I was being taught. I had two witches on either side of me teaching me how to put curses on Benny Hinn. And I saw a big, red, big uh, light around him, and I didn't understand what I was seeing. I was seeing half men from the shoulders up, which were a representation of his angels at the time, because I think, yeah, that God was protecting me at the time. Or to see all that stuff would freak me out. And he looked up in the right I was in the right-hand stage of the corner of the stage in the upper port, and he said, Do you three witches, um, you two on the either side of me, you're going straight to hell, turn to Jesus, or you're going to burn in hell, and I know what you're doing. And then he pointed to me, and he said, You're going to get saved soon. And everybody started praying, and I felt like tingling all over my body and I freaked out and screamed and they had to escort me out of the stadium. It was weird. It was like I didn't understand why we were doing what we were doing because he, yeah, he had a, a pure light around him and like I said before I, I saw colors and he had a white light like a bubble encased around him and I didn't understand why we were putting curses on him and they were like it was so brainwashed really what is the primary goal or purpose of Satanism yeah the pur their purpose is to rule the world what was your purpose 
My purpose was to get all the power that I could and to get as high up as I could. You have explained to us that um, there was human sacrifice that went on inside of the satanic church and inside of satanic ritual. Can you tell us how this was done? How did they murder people? Yeah. All the children's posters that you see that are missing, um, they're pretty much dead. They have underground caverns in the mountains and they keep the children and the kids and the women and men there. And then at a certain time in mid-September or October, they take them out. And they're so, remember when I told you I could make people get away from me? Like they'd make the people so numb with uh, curses and stuff. And they'd also drug them up. And they'd take a sacrificial knife and they'd start from the chest and move all the way down to your abdomen. And then that's how they sacrificed and they collect the blood and they drink it. Um, when the mid-September through um, mid-November, they sacrifice babies and nothing but babies because they need the pure blood of the untainted children. And I was really I didn't understand what it was like because I can't believe I'm seeing this every every year of my life I've experienced that and I was that was the hardest part for me is like hearing those babies literally scream and cry and then seeing their blood flow it was horrible Rebecca, where did they get the babies? Yeah, they have mothers that are expecting that they hold in the in the church, and they also have people that they kidnap, and they impregnate them through whatever, and they get babies from everywhere. Why is it that no one knows this? Because there's Satanists in the police, force and also in the government, the army, they're everywhere. They're even on the council of, yeah, the represent representatives of the United States also. And they're silenced because this is not being exposed because they don't want it to be exposed because they're really good at lying and hiding things. Rebecca, what happens to the people that want to come out of Satanism? They get killed. They get followed. They get taken. They get sacrificed in front of the congregation of the Satanic Church. Why? Because they know too much information about the Satanists and who their names and places of where they keep the people underground and they just know too much information. There's no, it's like I'm being in a gang or in a mafia. You don't get out alive without consequences. Is this difficult for you to talk about? It's really difficult because, yeah, I feel really, really scared because I don't know. I don't know how to tell everybody that's out there that I came out because I'm not sure if anybody's going to believe this because it's so much like a fantasy. Yeah, warfare is real. We're born into a war. And, yeah, you'd be very foolish to not to understand that because demons are real and people are influenced by bad spirits and demonic activity and they follow people they follow people like me around because yeah I know too much and the blood of Jesus yes does protect me don't get me wrong I know who Jesus is and I'm alive because of him to this day but because I know where they are at I'm going to expose it all
It's a very chilling testimony. And for some of you that are watching, maybe even frightening. But we always have to remember that the power of Jesus is greater. And just maybe it's time for the Western church to rise up in that power and to stop just attending services, but realize that we serve an almighty God with almighty power. We're going to go to a break now, and after the break, we're going to hear more about Rebecca's story. It has a great ending, and she's being powerfully used now. So I go, no, I don't think so, because God is God, and Satan is not. And there is no demon that is going to come into this ground that we are on because it's holy ground. Because God wants to get this little girl saved. It is about her soul going to hell or to heaven. And that's why we were there. And so um, I knew before she even got there because the darkness was so prevalent. Those Christians out there, you know what I'm talking about. You can feel it in your very being. And when she came onto the property, darkness, it was like hordes of hell were there. And yet there were angels bringing her in. When I drove onto the property, there was angels everywhere, and I was freaking out. I thought I had overdosed on my heroin, really. And it was horrible. But at the same time, I felt a peace. It was weird. The door flings open without me touching it, because at the time I was influenced, of course, by the demonic activity that was living inside of me. The front door flung open. And I wanted her to know immediately, I don't think so, babe. <laughs> because your darkness is not going to come into the light. Because she needed to know that God was God and that Satan was not. She sits me down on the table and I had all my, my garb on. She had a very large um, marking on her arm, a tattoo, which stated who she was. And so what that meant was... See, we're all marked with destiny. Whether you're a Christian or you're in, into Satanism, you're marked. And because she was going to become the fifth bride of Satan, she had already had her element marked on her arm. So that when people saw her in the natural or by the spirit, they would know who she was, that she had great authority in the spirit realm. I was pitch black in my eyes, and she told me names and dates and things that nobody should have known her eyes were so pitch black it was like there was no white at all and as i started talking to her this little girl cried out the demons were taking over me and i screamed please help me with all that i could because i couldn't un i couldn't be influenced i couldn't sit under the anointing that she was having around her the lord just chose to ride in on me as a donkey, just a vessel he uses. Um, but she got saved that day. She's like, well, I've got to go. You can either give their life to Jesus, or you can give your soul to Satan, and he'll drag your soul right to hell. And then she prayed for me, and yeah, they had sheets over their couches and tapes over the doors because they didn't know what was going to happen. She had a real hard time saying Jesus because as soon as you speak the name Jesus, everything has to bow before him. And I knew that she was relinquishing all power of darkness when she said his name. And at first it was like, oh, and she couldn't speak. And I said, you will say his name Jesus now. And as soon as I said that, it was like the hordes pulled back, and she screamed the name of Jesus. And this shot, I'm telling you, it was like a shaft of light hit her. And she was totally transformed. She gave me a deliverance, and I, I remember her touching my forehead and putting a cross symbol, and I blacked out, and then I woke up. And I, was, I felt like 90% of my body was left me. And I was filled with the Holy Spirit, and I started speaking in tongues, and I was drunk also. We let Satan know that the blood of Christ is over this child. And every door that was open, you have no authority to come back in. And then she got baptized immediately in the Holy Spirit. And then we, could, we had to carry her out. She was speaking in tongues, and she was laughing and weeping. And I know that's what Jesus sees every time. Someone comes out of darkness into the light, 
You don't have to come out of that type of a darkness. But whatever prison you're in, when you come out of darkness into the light, you'll know that you are free and that you are loved. And your whole life changes. And that's what happened to our girl. Patricia, it's absolutely amazing that the power of God could break all the darkness off that young woman's life in one moment. I all know. the darkness, a life of darkness given over to Satan. And yet in one moment of time, by, by saying the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ came and broke away all that darkness and set Rebecca completely free. I know. There's no match for the power of Jesus Christ. There is no match. And even as Christians, we have the light of God around us. She explained that even um, when she was talking about Benny Hinn and how he had this light yeah. all around him. That's the light of the glory of God. And our God is a consuming fire. He's an almighty God. He's a great God. He's a God of all power. And, um, and he set that captive free. And, you know, there's more captives out there. And church, we've got to be ready to get them set free. You have to be ready to go. It's not in us. It's in his name. It's in his power. And so why don't you pray about going in that name? I don't believe that um, sometimes we really understand the fullness of the cross and what Jesus did on that cross. I think a lot of times we may wear it, you know, cross around our neck or have them up and pictures all around him. But sometimes we can become very desensitized to what Jesus has done for us, too. And so they go, well, I believe it was done at the cross. And then I say, well, you know what? You are, you are a three-part being, spirit, soul, and body. And your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And if you open up your mind, like I'll use an example, if you're watching things on television or, or you're starting to dabble in the occult as a Christian or because you're not seeing the power in the church, but you're seeing these young people, you know, um, obtaining power, you know, you're going to start to get drawn by that influence. And so God is real. He has given us all authority in his church but unfortunately because we make pretend well, Satan can't be real and people go well I started praying and fasting and we started praying for you know the, our school and and all hell broke loose and I'm like yeah and if you're going through hell 